for who doesn't know me, my name is Laura Parisi, and uh, I'm working uh, as a research scientist uh, at CAUS in Saudi Arabia. My talk today focuses uh, on the current seismic activity uh, within a sedimentary basin, which is located on the shoulders uh, of a currently active uh, reef system. This basin hasn't been investigated in depth in previous studies because most of the rift action, let's say, occur on the main rift system. However, this study allowed to picture um, the fault system that developed uh, during the initial rifting phase, uh, which is now not really active, but still gives some light on its role in the current rift activity. So to be a bit more specific, uh, um, let's say, let's give an introduction, a tectonic introduction of this work. And um, so in the inset here, we see the extension of the African Rift. And in this work, we are going to focus on the Eastern branch of the Eastern African Rift, specifically our area located in this uh, black dot, uh, which is uh, the southernmost tip of the Eastern branch of the African Rift. So this part of the, so the black dots is zoomed in in this picture. And uh, this part of the rift is called the North Tanzania Divergence because the main rift from the north diverges in uh, different branches that you can see some in this figure. The main bonding faults of the rift close to our steady area are the Natron Fault, the Yassi Fault, and the Maniara Faults. All of them are accompanied by uh, shallow lakes. Um, one of the peculiarities of this part of the rift is that uh, although the African rift is thought to split uh, into the western and eastern branch uh, because of the presence uh, of the Tanzania craton that you can see here in the small inset, because it's actually difficult to rift apart, uh, one of the bonding fault in our study area, the uh, Ayasi fault, uh, actually uh, is, uh, goes through uh, the Tanzania craton. Uh, however, in general, the exact location of this boundary is not very well known, uh, not just in proximity of our study area, but uh, along uh, all the eastern branch of the rift. However, some outcrop uh, of uh, the Tanzanian uh, um, Creighton boundary actually have uh, been observed uh, at surface uh, at the edge of our study area, around this area, and uh, our study area is actually in this uh, black box. So going more, uh, let's say, in detail in our study area, um, we can say that our study area is located uh, off, uh, uh, off of the rift system. So it's on the flank on the main uh, rift, which is uh, located in the eastern part of this plot. Um, so this is, uh, let's say, an off-risk system uh, uh, where usually we have the formation of different uh, uh, sedimentary basins uh, during the evolution of the rift. And then at some point, uh, uh, because of a negative balance between the activity of the faults uh, and the sedimentation rate, uh, these basins start to, be, uh, to, to get filled up. So uh, our study area includes the Old Dubai Basin, which is uh, this uh, um, flat or sometimes depressed area that you can see here. And this area includes the Paleo Lake Old Dubai, which because of the extension of the rift uh, was active between uh, 4 and 0 0.8 million of years ago. This, uh, uh, this uh, Paleo Lake is marked uh, by several uh, thin sedimentary faults uh, that are named uh, from first to fifth, uh, from east uh, to west. In most of the cases, I will just refer to the first uh, fault system. Um, and then uh, when the uh, Paleo Lake Old Dubai got filled up uh, for some imbalance between the activity of the fault and the sedimentation rate, rate the uh, action moved to El Balba Depression, which is uh, um, this basin that you see here. And uh, some water still accumulate in this depression, mainly in the north. So this means that uh, uh, some of the fault uh, that actually uh, creating the space within, uh, uh, within the Balba Depression must be at some point active. The Old Dubai Basin is surrounded by the volcanic island, which is this complex of extinct volcanoes. And the extinction of these volcanoes actually manifested the migration of the volcanic activity of the rift from our steady area toward the east and northeast. Um, the volcanic islands also include uh, the Ngorongoro and this large caldera, uh, from which we can recognize uh, some fault that actually go along uh, the, the rim of the caldera itself. The intricate uh, fault system of the, of the Old Dubai Basin 
join the uh, Yasi fault uh, through the Lemma Groot fault. The Lemma Groot fault is a fault that dissected the Lemma Groot volcano actually in two different parts. This uh, sketch that we can see here is a section uh, from A to B, and there's a snapshot of when the old Dubai Lake was active. So we have uh, this uh, system of fault uh, synthetic to the rift. Then we have the Meshidi fault, uh, which separates the old Balba depression from uh, the volcanic islands, uh, which is the only uh, prominent uh, antithetic fault. Um, from this sketch, we can understand that the depth extent of this fault uh, is actually not very well known, at least uh, from uh, um, um, surface uh, geology, geology, geological observation. Also, what we don't know is uh, the relationship between uh, this uh, uh, system of fault and the actual uh, main rift. So to study the intricate uh, fault system in the old Dubai basin, uh, we carried out uh, a passive uh, seismic experiment uh, including uh, uh, that included the uh, 17 uh, broadband uh, seismometers uh, that uh, was run uh, for a total of almost uh, two years. So the fieldwork activity to maintain uh, such uh, a network was uh, uh, quite intense. So I would like to thank everyone that uh, contributed uh, to it. In this map on the right, we have uh, the distribution of our seismic network uh, each session is represented uh, by uh, red triangles. And the stream uh, or continuous uh, waveform uh, was screened uh, with the STA-LTA algorithm. And this uh, brought us uh, to locate uh, more than 2,500 events. Uh, that, uh, because of the vicinity of the main rift, uh, actually for us, all these events uh, were a uh, kind of noise because uh, we were interested in the events of the off-risk system. So we took a bit of time to identify the local earthquakes. So the one actually occurring within the seismic network. After identifying these earthquakes, we manually picked the P and the S waves. Then we, ru uh, we run uh, two rounds uh, of uh, location, one very simple uh, with a 1D velocity model and uh, a simple uh, least square inversion. And the second one is that we use uh, the double difference algorithm and several, several 1D model. And at the end, for each earthquake, we um, selected the best location. And this is the final seismicity map that uh, we obtained. Here we can see a bit more in detail. So we have the map and we have two sections, the south and north and the west and east section. The first thing that we can notice is that most of the seismicity is located west of the Lemma Group Fault and, uh, and also in the southern part of the network. We also see that that the depth distribution of the earthquakes is bimodal, which picks a 15 and 25 kilometers of depth. And we see that the deep earthquakes are actually west of the Lemma Groot Fault, and the shallow earthquakes are uh, east of the first fault system and mainly below the uh, Ngorongoro caldera. So to identify the active fault, we studied the three distribution of the earthquakes, and we grouped all the earthquakes in four different clusters that here are shown with different colors. So the red cluster includes the most of the seismicity that was recorded during our experiment. And when we projected this seismicity along this line, we can see here in this figure, uh, the seismicity aligned along a feature that the dip 45 degrees. So the distribution, the depth distribution is between 15 and 30 kilometers of depth. However, it is possible that the more earthquakes are actually occurring in the shallower part of this, of this fault. However, we cannot locate them because, uh, the, because of the limited extension of our uh, seismic network. In fact, in this part here, you see that we actually don't have a seismic station. Um, the focal mechanism of an earthquake of magnitude 2.2 that uh, occurred within uh, this uh, cluster show a focal mechanism which is in agreement uh, with, uh, uh, let's say, the strike and the dip uh, of, uh, of this fault. Also, we found an event of uh, magnitude 5.5, which occurred uh, close to the red cluster, which has a, a similar, uh, or anyway, um, um, a focal mechanism in agreement. It's important to notice that the orientation of this focal plane are not really optimal uh, for the uh, extend, rift extension, uh, the current one, which is represented by this arrow. Therefore, it is uh, probable that the slip on this structure is actually occurring on a pre-existing shear zone. 
So the surface projection of this uh, feature crossed the Yassi fault uh, in this area. And this area is actually the same uh, area where the um, outcrop between uh, the outcrop of the suture zone between the Tanzanian Craton and the Mozambique belt were observed. So also, um, let's say some older studies show that uh, this suture zone between the Tanzanian Craton and the Mozambique belt should dip around 45 degrees in our steady area. So Laura, because of you, you are 10 yes. minutes now. Okay, you thanks. Ten, 10 minutes, just continue. Okay, okay. So because of the geographical location and the depth extent, but also the strike and the dip of this feature, of this tectonic feature, we speculate that the red cluster is depicting the suture zone between the Tanzanian Craton and the Mozambique belt that has been reactivated to accommodate the current regional stress. So it's interesting to note that the, the, uh, the prominent Yassi fault uh, appear asismic, not just from our experiment, but even from previous experiment. Conversely to this, uh, this other structure, which is almost perpendicular, that instead looks quite active. So to explain this, uh, we can show that the Yassi fault, which is this line here, is actually mostly contained within the Tanzania Craton, which is quite uh, strong and thick. And in fact, uh, um, let's say the Yassi fault is known to deep uh, to, 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 to go uh, at not more than two kilometers in depth. So this, uh, let's say, to, to break this fault is quite, uh, let's say, it needs quite a bit of work. Instead, uh, this other uh, um, feature, this uh, suture zone, although it's not uh, optimally oriented, uh, is an pre-existing structure and also is also deeply penetrating. So the stress is actually probably uh, easily accommodated along the suture than the Yassi fault. Going back to the clusters, I present to you the yellow cluster, uh, where most of the events, uh, when they are projected in depth, depict a steep fault that dip toward west. And the projection actually corresponds to the Meshidi fault, which is this antitype fault which separates the Olbalba depression from the volcanic island. A few months after we recovered the, the, the station, as uh, uh, after we recovered the station, an earthquake of magnitude 4.5 occurred along the Mishidi Fault, which is actually here. So we missed it just for a few weeks, and so we could not calculate the focal mechanism. It's important to note that the, the, there is no significant seismic activity uh, around the, the Paleo Lake called Dubai, which means that this lake uh, got filled up uh, also because because of the lack of the extension uh, in, in, this, uh, in this area. Uh, going to the purple cluster that you can see in this picture, which is called the Dengorongoro cluster, when we project this on a section, we see that the distribution of these earthquakes is between 5 to 20 kilometers. And these earthquakes trace, trace a least fault whose uh, surface projection corresponded to the uh, rim uh, fault on the Ngorongoro. So since this fault, which look quite important, was not actually recognized, we decided to call it uh, an uh, WR. Then we have a few earthquakes left uh, that are located uh, between the Lema Groot and the Ngorongoro. And uh, also in this case, uh, um, trace uh, a least three fault uh, that uh, uh, whose uh, projection at the surface uh, corresponded to the uh, Lemma Groot fault. Uh, even in this case, it flattened at 20 kilometers of depth. So here we synthesize uh, every, let's say, all the clusters. And uh, we want to propose uh, this uh, new uh, tectonic model of the western flank uh, of the North Tanzania divergence, uh, where we see that uh, um, there are the, the, the faults uh, of the Old Dubai Basin uh, together with the fault uh, present even uh, below the Ngorongoro caldera, probably because uh, of their geometry, join uh, in a detachment that go through, uh, go below the volcanic island and uh, join the main, uh, the main fault uh, of the rift uh, at about uh, 20 kilometers of depth. So to summarize, here we present a passive experiment, a passive seismic experiment of about two years to study the network of fault in the Western Rift and uh, Western Off Rift system on the North Tanzanian divergence. 
we saw that the default of the old Y paleolake are not currently active, but there is still some extension on the antithetic MSG default. We also saw that uh, um, some least weak fault uh, and that are in the off-risk system uh, probably join uh, the main rift uh, at about 20 kilometers of depth. We saw finally that uh, the Yasi fault is currently not very active. Uh, and conversely, we see uh, some activity on the suture zone uh, between the Tanzanian Creighton and the Mozambique belt. So with this, uh, I finish. Uh, I thank you for listening and I welcome uh, any question you may have. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Laura. Uh, if you have a question, just type it in the chat or just a queue or some other sign. Uh, there's no... Oh, yes. Uh, Fuller. You go ahead. Okay. Uh, hi, Laura. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, so I, I was wondering, those, those earthquake clusters that you interpret to be related to single um least strict faults do you think they could act, actually have occurred on different fault segments but because of sparsity of events you really cannot see each fault segment that it could have occurred on so if i well understood your question you're asking if i am assigning this fault to individual least strict fault or just because they are really sparse they could actually be all belonging to a single fault this is what you're asking am i correct yeah so essentially you're interpreting that all those earthquake clusters belong to a single fault segment like a single fault but if you do not have enough events um you might actually you know one could make this interpretation um, even in the in the scenario where you have multiple faults and events on those separate faults, you know it, we're interpreting yes. clusters here rather than yeah. Um, so yeah. so just to say, so this uh, clustering was done uh, like manually. So let's say it was really going uh, was done uh, going through the three D distribution uh, of the earthquakes and trying to plot them, uh, project them in different uh, uh, azimuths uh, until uh, let's say I was uh, getting uh, some nice uh, alignment of the fault. Uh, of course, uh, what you say is true. Let's say especially when uh, they are sparse, uh, this could be just uh, uh, earthquakes uh, belonging to many faults uh, that uh, are just uh, projected on the same fault. And this is, for example, the case in the old Dubai Basin where we don't have many earthquakes. So we have some that I can associate to the Messili fault, but these, let's say, I don't really know what, to what they belong. In this case, let's say, and especially in the case of the red cluster, let's say I would be quite confident that they belong to one fault. Then, of course, it depends on the scale we are looking at. So let's say the fault is never a single surface. There are always, let's say, and different uh, uh, minor faults that uh, may be considered within the same uh, fault system. So I think it will answer to your question is uh, it really depends on the scale and the details we are looking at, if they actually correspond to a single fault or to the fault, uh, to the system of faults. Okay. I hope I answered to your question. Yes, thanks. Uh, there is one question from Kim, but she's a convener. We'll push her to the end. Uh, Yaktish, you have one question that's slightly related and another one that is unrelated. Could you ask the question yourself so that uh, Laura hears it as well? Hey, Laura. Hello. Thanks for the nice presentation. So uh, I think you partly explained the, the clustering, but I was still wondering that how did you like properly separate it and properly assign them? And the second thing was, for example, this depends on the, the re relocation, right? So you yes. are using uh, 1D velocity structure. I, I'm not sure if there is a 3D structure, but how much difference do you expect to obtain if you use 3D versus 1D? And then your whole clustering and everything will change, right? Yes. So as I was saying before, I tried the, uh, let's say, of course, I know you are a more quantitative person than me, so you are probably expecting uh, some uh, fancy algorithm to do this clustering. I actually tried to do this, uh, let's say, in a let's say more automatic way, but uh, all the automatic algorithm to cluster, they were not working for two reasons. First, because these algorithms are not, they don't have a geological background. And second, because anyway, the events were not enough to work well with these algorithms. So this uh, clustering was manually, visually done. 
And then, yes, I can expect that, uh, and I actually seen uh, the location, especially the depths, uh, changing a lot when it's changing the 1D model. So, yes, I used the 1D velocity models, but I used the multiple uh, 1D velocity models. And then, uh, let's say for each earthquake, I was selecting uh, the location that was giving me the uh, lowest uh, error. So it was a way to compensate. It's not really using 3D, but it was a way to compensate a bit uh, the fact that I was still using a 1D velocity model. Mm. I don't expect them to picture different faults. I uh, expect in case uh, with a more precise velocity model to have a better depth estimate. Right. Thanks.